Oh, shalom, shalom again, Rastafari. This is Ras Yadinos Teferi. This is Wendem Yad. And, and I want to say this before, but I think now is a good time since we're on this um, 37th uh, Shalak Laka portion or Lak to Lakalachu portion of um, scripture, namely Numbers uh, chapter 13 to Numbers chapter 15, around verse 47 or so, right? And what we want to say right here, first and foremostly, is that Marcus Garvey, uh -huh, Marcus Garvey has nothing to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. Marcus Garvey, he doesn't. And this is one of the, this is one of the problems that's been going on, is that some have been trying to make it seem as though Ethiopian World Federation, which is this right here, has something to do with Marcus Garvey. And many careless races have misassociated Garvey and Garveyism and Garvey's philosophy with the teaching of his Imperial Majesty. And this in itself causes and creates dysfunction and is a sign, another example Another sign of unbelief. Now, in the portion from Hebrews chapter 3, who was reading on why the, those who Jah had brought out of Egypt wandered in the wilderness around the same old mountain. This is, this is significant because a mountain is usually a kingdom or government in biblical scriptural interpretation. But now, when we look at a mountain from a metaphorical usage of that word, a mountain can be an um, uh, obstacle, uh, you know, when Christ said, and you will say to that mountain, move, and it will be moved. But they lack the faith to say to the mountain to move. But I and I do not lack that faith to say to the mountain, move, in our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, and it shall move. So we're saying this, hear that Marcus Garvey, right, Marcus Messiah Garvey, has nothing to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. Let's understand that. Marcus Messiah Garvey, Marcus Garvey, right, Marcus Messiah Garvey, has nothing whatsoever to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. And thus, by extension, the red, black, and green also has nothing to do with the green, yellow, and red. Let us, let, us, let us be clear on these points. You understand? Now, historically, are there relationships historically where things were at the same time, like what Garvey was doing was at the same time of Ethiopianism, and Ethiopianism was, we even have a document, it's the, the most recent publication, the most recent book, I think we have that in the next, in the next wing, but the book, um, Light and Light and Truth by R. B. Lewis. This book was written by an African American, Afro American, or a self professed colored man. And he said colored, but allow that because that was eighteen forty I think eighteen forty one. But actually when we check it's like I think the work was completed in eighteen thirty six. So that means it's probably being researched from maybe the turn of the 1800s. In other words, black people in America, black people in America were recognizing the Ethiopian roots, and they were making those connections. So we talk about Ethiopianism as the next subject matter that we want to hit up on. But the first thing we want to say is that Garvey, Marcus Garvey, he has nothing to do with the Ethiopian World Federation. Whenever you see ones and ones trying to blend Garvey, with the Federation, you're going to have dysfunction. You're going to have dysfunction, straight up. Now, some of y'all probably say, yeah, and I love Garvey. Yeah, we know what he said about his majesty, but, you know, blah, 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 so forth and so on. No, that, that's a serious point. Historically, we love Garvey, too, as a brother. You understand? As a black man, should we say. We love Garvey in that sense. And as the king of kings shows us, you know, we recognize him. However, in the sense of the movement, in the sense of um, putting priorities correct, it's important to know that Garvey is not the one for I and I. Who is the one for I and I? Well, we know it's His Majesty, but next to His Majesty is the one whom He has sent, and that is Dr. Malaku, um, 
Emmanuel Bayan, the good doctor, Dr. Emmanuel Bayan, Dr. Malaku, Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. You see that right down there? He was the special emissary. He was a special emissary sent to we, the black people, in the Western Hemisphere. His Majesty sent him. This is the one whom His Majesty sent. Right? His Majesty did not send this one. He did not send Garvey. You know, was, and, and that should be very, very clear. But this is the point of order because after we went through um, Hebrews chapter 3, mm -hmm, after we touched on Hebrews chapter 3 concerning the exhortation, the generation that came out of Egypt and why they were unable to enter in, and then we see ourselves have our promised land, Ethiopia, Shashemeni, and still the majority of the diaspora is still wandering in the wilderness, and most are just have just learned about the Ethiopian World Federation perhaps in the last five or ten years, and many more perhaps even more recently in some of these videos, the postings, and other things that we have posted with this new technology. And then we have to ask the question, why is that? How come we haven't heard of Malako Emanuel Bayan in the songs? We hear about nobody remembers Marcus Garvey, but the truth of the matter is no one remembers the teachings of His Majesty. That's what it's really about. You know what I'm saying? And we know that this is not a popular message, and some folks might, you know, say, oh, he don't know what he's talking about, fire bun that brother there, he's blah, blah, blah. You know, they're going to talk these things, but... That, Find out if they're addressing the issue. That's the main thing. Because if they don't address the issue, that should tell the wise amongst you a whole lot. They still are not addressing this issue. And the issue basically is that Shashimeni, Shashimeni is still, right? Shashimeni is still the issue. Shashimeni is still the issue. So let's understand why, what is the way it is. And we're going to touch on other books like this one too. And this one right here, the um, from Babylon to Rastafari, by this brother here, um, Douglas Mack. It's a very good, it's a very good testimony right here from ones and ones who actually lived it. You know what I mean? Who actually lived it, and it makes that connection with the land grant, with the 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 Africa mission that was sent from Jamaica with the works of the Federation that was coming out from America and it shows us the half of the story that most of us still don't know and many are just learning about very very important but Marcus Garvey yes he's one of the greatest of of black men in the Western Hemisphere however however that might be that all is trumped by the King of Kings the King of Kings sent this so please do not um, mix, you know, like mix these, these elements such as the red, black, and green with this particular flag here in the Marcus Garvey order. You always say in the Marcus Garvey order of things. And please do not put His Majesty's picture next to this one who belittled him. I mean, it's the most, it's the most rebellious or ignorant or retarded thing to do. You understand? Do we still note Marcus Garvey in the history? Of course we do. You understand? Most of the non-Rastafari black people who have some Afrocentricity or Pan-Africanism, they love Garvey. But with the acts, why don't they love the King of Kings? And then Garvey's at the center of that, of that controversy. But this is the one whom His Majesty has sent. He sent Dr. Malaku Amanu Obeyan. He didn't send Garvey. So tell your children, learn more about him, and learn more about the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Learn about the land grant. Yes, my brothers and sisters, more to come. Stay tuned. Shalom.